Hey, this is Brent with Lockett's Motorsports. This is a set of uh, 48 IDA Webers for our 496 FE for Mr. Dennis. Just got these in yesterday from uh, from Jim in Glease. And just kind of giving them a once over right now. Everything looks good uh, so far. They made the trip from, I think they came from Florida, so they made the trip up here without any issues. Everything operates freely. So uh, this video is going to be um, dedicated to, to making sure this manifold fits and um, see what we need to do to make it fit. Um, in the past, we have... Uh, a buddy of mine, another engine builder buddy of mine, has uh, has put uh, an eight stack EFI engine on the dyno, and it was a complete uh, horror to to dyno just because of where the linkages are and um, how the dyno uh, throttle actuates. So uh, before I bolt this thing down for the final time, I'm going to take a a uh, Take it down to the dyno that I use down at Dale Mirrors Racing Engines and throw an engine block up on the dyno and put this on top of it and see what we can do to actuate uh, that bell crank. So um, that needs to be the first thing that has to be done. Today, though, um, I'm going to check port alignment and uh, check and see uh, how well the geometry fits the, the cylinder heads. Very rarely do I get to bolt an intake on without uh, adjusting it in some way. And and that's, uh, that's not only FE specific, but uh, all engine specific. And um, the first thing that has to happen, though, uh, is these bolts are pretty much captive the way that they are. So these carburetors have to come off. So I want to take a little bit and uh, and get everything off the manifold and then we can put it on um, Mr. Dennis's long block and, and see what it looks like. All right, so we got the carburetors off of the intake and uh, what I did was I just kept everything together and uh, moved it off easily and took pictures of, uh, of the bell crank and, and that stand over there and just left all linkages the way that they are. That was the easiest way for me to do it without changing anything. But uh, I don't have any intake gaskets on this. And you can see how well everything lines up with no gaskets. So you know what that means. It's going to have to have the flanges whacked, uh, the thickness of a gasket. That's pretty par for the course, typical stuff. So um, otherwise... Ports look, the, they line up good. They don't match um, the heads perfectly, but the mismatches on the floor. And typically, stuff doesn't follow the floor. It follows the roof. But um, another thing that we'll look at is our china wall gap. And there's not much there. So you lose just a little bit when you tighten all this down. But what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to have the flanges milled 60 and then we'll also take 60 off the front and back to make sure that we have an adequate gap there. Um, that's a very critical spot. And, you know, if you're still using cork in gaskets in the year 2023, shame on you. But um, even with silicone, you know, you don't want these two mating surfaces to touch because um, that'll hold the intake off of the cylinder heads. But uh, this is where we are, and um, I'm going to take this guy down to the dyno uh, this week and uh, see what we need to do to line everything up. And uh, we'll get the intake, um, the flanges milled, and everything milled. And the uh, only thing left for me to do is to check our push rod clearance this intake has been it's been worked before you can tell somebody's had a die grinder on it so um oh i forgot to say um 
this is a used manifold. I don't know about the carburetors, but um, the the intake was used just because we couldn't find any brand new Weber intakes anywhere. That's kind of par for the course too. So uh, Dennis found this setup and sent them to Jim and Gleese, and Jim went through it all. But um, you can tell somebody's been been in it a little bit. The push rod tubes have been uh, worked, and uh, I'll check our push rod alignment here in a minute with some some checking tools and make sure that we have clearance in the places that we need to uh, have clearance and uh, we'll get the push rods on the way um that's about it right now uh i did get dennis's all of his pulleys and alternator bracket and everything glass beaded so we're going to put some primer paint on those um otherwise um we're going to have the intake milled and check what we need to do on the dyno to make it easier um, the way that that Borla intake was with the eight stack EFI, um, it was incredibly hard to pull. And uh, it just made me not ever want to see any intake like this ever again. And uh, we're going to have to do something different. So we're going to put my mechanical engineering degree to, uh, to use. But uh, just another step, another check mark, and uh, we'll move forward. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I know this is a short video, but there's really not too much left to do on this engine. And uh, this was a major thing that I thought you guys would want to see. So um, it is uh, Father's Day weekend. So happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And uh, I'm going to take some time off today and hang out with my daughter. And I uh, hope you guys have fun with your family. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Got lots and lots of FE and small block Ford and Cleveland stuff coming through as soon as I get parts for everything. Uh, it's like treading molasses in here trying to get stuff done. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.